In this video, we're going to take a deeper look into what the scientific research has to say about barefoot shoes to figure out whether they're a tool that can help us solve our feet problems because some people believe that they could be coming from modern shoes or if they're just another one of those fads that you should avoid at all costs. But to answer this question, let's make sure we're all on the same page about what barefoot shoes actually are. They're just shoes designed to mimic being barefoot while protecting your feet from a shard of glass stabbing into your foot. And they differ in four key areas. First off, we have the wide toe box, which allows your feet to spread out. The entire shoe is flexible so that your feet can move around freely. Then we have a non-elevated heel. And finally, there's minimal cushion for more sensory feedback from the ground. And all this hype around barefoot shoes really started in 2010, when evolutionary scientists from Harvard, Dr. Daniel Lieberman and his colleagues started studying people from Kenya that had been barefoot their entire lives. With their findings, they ended up publishing a study in Nature, one of the top academic journals. They found three distinct running forms, a forefoot strike, which was landing on the ball of the foot, a midfoot strike, landing on the mid part of the foot, and a rear foot strike landing on the heel. Interestingly, those that wore modern shoes predominantly rear foot strike, so they landed on their heel. And that's probably because the majority of the cushion is on that part of the shoe. Whereas on the flip side, barefoot runners predominantly landed with a forefoot strike and sometimes a midfoot strike. And according to the paper, the moment that can cause the most injury when running is right when your foot actually hits the ground. When they looked at impact peaks, so specifically how fast the force would impact the body, they found that when they had barefoot runners heel strike, which again, they don't usually do, the incline was much steeper. It was tenfold higher versus it was similar with those that were wearing modern shoes and rear foot striking and barefoot people that would forefoot strike. They also found that when running at similar speeds, impact measured in body weights was approximately three times lower in habitually barefoot runners who forefoot striked than in those who rear foot strike, regardless of whether they were barefoot or in shoes. This evidence then led the researchers to think, because running is such a repetitive motion that we do over and over and over, maybe this could be the reason that a lot of people are experiencing injuries for the last 30 or 40 years. And Lieberman explains that from an evolutionary medicine perspective, that barefoot running could actually be the solution. If we really zoom out on the evolutionary of humans, we can see that Modern shoes are a very new thing. The idea of cushioned heels, arch support, and stiffened soles have only really been around since the 1970s. Before, we predominantly wore minimal shoes, for example, sandals or moccasins, for the last like 45,000 years. Whereas on top of that, our genus, Homo, has been around for more than 3 million years. So we've had a lot of time to adapt. And when you look at it through this perspective, Barefoot shoes don't really appear to be a fad anymore. And in 2020, we have a new research paper from Sikting and colleagues. I'm really sorry if I butchered that name. And they found that as many features of modern shoes have been studied already, there was one element, toe springs, that had not really been done yet. They had 13 participants walk along a treadmill five times. In a randomized order, they either walked barefoot or in custom sandals with an upwards curvature that was either 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, or 40 degrees. The study ended up finding that toe springs in shoes changed the natural biomechanics of the foot during walking by reducing the amount of work that the intrinsic foot muscles have to do with every step. While toe springs do increase comfort, it could be one of those scenarios where if you don't use it, you lose it. And because you're not using those intrinsic foot muscles, they actually believe that it could be a reason for the foot issues that we experience, like flat foot or actually plantar fasciitis. So far we're seeing, hey, barefoot shoes are great, but does the rest of the scientific literature support that? So then after 2010, we make our way all the way up to 2016, and things aren't looking that good for barefoot shoes anymore. There was a systematic review from Hollander and colleagues that tried to do a meta-analysis on the research papers available at the moment on barefoot shoes. And literally they found that there was low evidence at 
best and the quality of the research was subpar. So that same researcher decided to go and do clinical trials, clinical or more controlled non-bias scenarios. And they did three clinical randomized control trials where they tested subjects between seven to eight week periods. In each of the studies, participants were completely new to being barefoot and were asked to either do barefoot running for 15 minutes or were asked to balance 15 times once per week. The studies tested running stability, running biomechanics adaptations, and balance. The results in each of the studies were not very good. They experienced lower running stability, they had increased force loading rates, which was the exact opposite of what we previously had seen from Lieberman's research, and there was no advantage for balance. But here's the thing with these research studies. I've personally been wearing barefoot shoes for three years now, and it took me way longer than one 15 minute session for eight weeks to actually adapt my foot muscles. So I find it hard to believe that they were actually to get some significant results in that short period of time. So I really wanted to see if there was any research for more extended periods of time. A recent study published in 2021 from Curtis and colleagues wanted to see what would happen if they monitored people over a six month transition. To do so, they had three groups. The first was a group that wore modern shoes their entire lives and would transition to barefoot shoes with the requirement of 70% or more time spent to them while they were wearing shoes. And they had to wear them for at least six days per week. The second was a control group that would continue wearing their modern shoes. And the third was an experienced group that had been using barefoot shoes for around 2.5 years so they could compare the progress. The study found that toe flexion, so the ability to actually press down your toes, increased by 57.4%. But take that number with a grain of salt because the standard deviation was plus or minus 68.4% which basically means for some people, they experienced no strength gains and even lost some strength. The researchers believe that this could be the case because modern shoes are not very flexible, so it doesn't really allow us to be able to press down and flex our toes. However, it's important to know that this study was funded by Vivo Barefoot. They sell barefoot shoes and it was done by one of their partnered organizations. But the thing is, it's not to say that this research is not credible, but we more so want to be looking at it from a skeptical perspective and maybe waiting for more research that continues to have similar findings. It's really important to mention that where the research stands at the moment is not super conclusive. There still needs to be a lot more done. Like if you take that and compare it to the body of research around muscle building or fat loss, they're not even on the same playing field at all. A lot of the stuff out there is going to be anecdotal stuff from people actually having their experiences and sharing that information. And it's going to be coming from content creators like me. So take that with whatever grain of salt you want. Like as I mentioned before, I have been wearing barefoot shoes for three years now, and it's been really great for me. I do feel as though my feet are stronger and the mind muscle connection with my feet is much better where I can stabilize myself, press my feet into the ground. And especially when I'm lifting, I feel a lot more stable because I'm not on this like unstable cushion, a little bit leaned forward. It's just kind of awkward. At the end of the day, I don't know if barefoot shoes are going to be for you. That's going to be a decision that you want to make yourself. But at the end of the day, my recommendation is to always move the bigger levers. So the 20% of things that can give you 80% of the results, oftentimes those are going to be the simple and boring things that no one want to hear about. Building more muscle, losing more fat, improving the quality of your nutrition, eating whole foods instead of processed garbage, and not to mention improving your sleep so you actually feel recovered the next day. If you decide to get some barefoot shoes for yourself, my recommendations and some discount codes are gonna be down in the description. And while you're down there, if you wanna support the channel, hitting the subscribe button and also the notification bell to stay up to date with all our future videos is really going to help out a lot.